If you are planning your upcoming kitchen remodel, you're probably starting to think about your cabinets that you will be purchasing. And in the cabinet world, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of people selling cabinetry and there's a ton of education that you need to be going through as a consumer, as the person who's going to be living in that kitchen, so you understand how to purchase the cabinetry correctly, okay? There's a ton of mistakes that people make. There's, uh, I came across people that spend thousands of dollars on their cabinet package only to have regrets in the end, and I don't want that to happen to you. So today we're going to break down the foundational questions about cabinetry, I'm gonna give you a ton of education so you can be prepared before even talking to people about cabinet lines. And we're going to deep dive into the cabinet box constructions, but also into the different cabinet lines. And that's a topic that I don't see a lot of people talking about. So I took about three hours this morning to put all of these notes and presentation together for you to be a really, really up-to-date video on explaining cabinetry and the deep dive into cabinetry to prepare you. And uh, just as a side note, the Platform House actually did a private study where they concluded that about 30% of people's complete kitchen remodeling budget flows into the cabinetry. So keep in mind that your cabinet package is going to take up a big chunk of your overall budget and you want to get things right because it's the foundation. You are more likely down the road to potentially swap out a backsplash and swap out a countertop but you're not going to immediately swap out your cabinets. Your cabinet package needs to be designed correctly, have the right footprint in place, consider the appliances you want to put in there and last you a very, very long time. And in the end of this video, we have a free download for you guys, 100% for free PDF. It's our free remodeling guide. And if you download it, it actually asks you a ton of questions to prepare for your kitchen remodel it gives you a lot of good things to think about. It even has sections where you can fill in your own notes, okay? So I'll um, tell you where to get that in the end of the video and let's dive right in. Really quick before we jump right in, my name is Kasten Moray. I'm the owner of The Material Bar in our showroom and company, our team. We specialize in cabinetry. We actually specialize in several lines of cabinetry so we can help people whatever kind of budget or style they are looking for. And our secret sauce is the design behind it when working on cabinetry and education. And just to put things into perspective, I think our team in the, just the last three months, we've won like six different kind of design and project awards for the work that we've been doing. So I've been working in the cabinet world for 10 plus years. It's what I love to do. It's what we specialize in. And I'm excited to go through all of these details in this education with you to help you purchase cabinets correctly. All right, let's talk cabinet styles and uh, deep dive. Cabinet styles explained. We are going to talk about the box construction and you find some videos about the box construction. A lot of people talk about framed versus frameless cabinetry and what does that really mean? We're going to talk about inset cabinetry. What does that mean and what does it look like? And then we're gonna deep dive into pros and cons for each style, style creation for each, which is a topic I also don't see happening a lot or, or being talked about a lot on uh, YouTube. And then let's also dissect cabinet line differences, okay? That's another topic I don't hear a lot of people talk about. And I want you to fully understand the cabinet world. What is a stock cabinet line, a semi-custom cabinet line, in a full custom cabinet line, where are the differences and when should I be using what? Framed versus frameless cabinet box construction. Okay, this is, uh, you've probably seen a couple of videos about this. This is a, a, a question a lot of people have, but it basically talks about the cabinet box. It doesn't talk about any of the finishes, any of your door styles, any of your wood species that you might be using, paint versus stain or laminate, none of that. It purely talks about the box itself, okay? None of the drawers, none of the doors, none of that. And in this image right here on the left, you can see a framed box. So we basically have two different ways of building a cabinet box. And on the left, the framed box, that's the 
kind of old school American way of building a cabinet. And on the right, you see a frameless box. And some people also call that the Euro box or a European cabinet box because it's the European way of cabinet box constructions. So, and just to dissect, dissect this a little bit, when you look on the image on the left, what is the big difference between the two here is we see that face frame in the front. And typically that face frame is a three quarter inch thick real wood face frame, a lot of times made out of maple or plywood. And it basically wraps the top, the bottom, the sides, and in between any kind of door and drawer openings, okay? And uh, on the right, we see a frameless box. The frameless box has no face frame. That's the big difference, okay? The frame cabinet box has a face frame. The frameless cabinet box does not have a face frame. You also see a couple of little differences here on the top of the box. And actually, most cabinet lines in the frameless world that I'm working with, and I just found this picture off of Google really quick, um, but most cabinet styles that I work with that are frameless have a full top, okay? And a lot of most framed cabinet boxes are correct, kind of shown in this image right here on the left. They do not have a full top on um, the box itself before you put your countertop on. So um, there's differences in the box construction uh, when it comes to the two, not just from the face frame, but we typically look at framed cabinet boxes and kind of say that the strength of the box comes from the face frame. So that three quarter inch face frame on the front is what really helps this box to stay square and stay solid. And on the right, when you're looking at the frameless box, the box itself is typically built a little sturdier to hold its strength without needing the face frame. And a lot of times you actually have a full cover on the top of a frameless box and it also helps to keep the box square. Now, none of this takes into consideration if you're using a plywood box or you're using a furniture grade box. That's a whole nother topic for another day, okay? We're just going over how are these two boxes constructed differently, okay? Here's another thing that um, I don't think a lot of people think about, and that's the reality of what does that look like when I have a framed box versus a frameless box? And on the next page I have here for you, we can see the differences. The left side, it's very typical for framed cabinet boxes that between your drawers, between your doors, you have a lot of gapping. There's also a word, um, it, it's called overlay, full overlay and half overlay. That is also a word that only comes out of the framed cabinet world. And it basically explains how much the door is going to overlay the face frame. If it is more of an overlay, you have a smaller reveal between the doors, you have a smaller gap but you still have a gap as seen on the left on this picture. The right side, on the other hand, here, frameless, what makes frameless, just one of the many reasons why people love it, is that there is no gapping. It's a very seamless, very clean look. Because there is no frame, there is no room for any kind of gapping. We have to ensure that we have complete coverage of our opening of that box. And as you can see, drawers and doors sit way, way tighter. And it's just a way cleaner look in my opinion. Now, if you've been following me for a minute, you know I am German. Sometimes I say a couple wonky words, but I was born and raised in Germany and this is just the look that I am accustomed to. And I have plenty of more pictures for you so you can make up your own mind, but I think we're going to be on the same page here. But, uh, okay, so just to recap, you have a lot of gapping when it comes to framed cabinetry. Now discussing look when talking about the different box constructions, I really want to emphasize into the fact that framed cabinetry to me always is going to look a little bit more builder grade. It's not going to look in my sense, this is my personal opinion as a cabinet professional, it's not going to look 
super high end or anything like that. It's more builder grade to me. And it's always more of a traditional and transitional look. I don't think that a true modern look, a really sleek, clean look is necessarily achieved by using framed cabinetry. Inset, stunning, absolutely stunning, which is why I think that framed cabinets are always going to be around. Very stunning look, very high-end look, and more of a traditional, and it could be transitional, look but done very sophisticated okay oh my british is coming out um very sophisticated you see it a lot in the southern part of the u.s but it is making a huge comeback i think this this year alone we've done maybe six really large inset projects so very very beautiful i recommend doing it when you have space in terms of you're going to be losing a lot of cabinet space using inset cabinetry. We discussed and showed it. There's a lot of spacing that you're going to miss out on your drawer boxes. So as long as you have a larger footprint kitchen, you can still use inset cabinetry. You're not basically too worried about losing drawer space. It's really about the look. Just keep in mind in general, it's about 10 to 15% more than uh, the same, maybe frameless cabinet package. Okay. Frameless your imagination you i mean the sky is the limit and frameless you can design whatever however you want you can design traditional you can add on trim and end panels all of those things you can also design transitional and very sleek modern looks i think that frameless is 100 percent universal and you can do whatever you want i always tell our designers when we're first training cabinetry and we basically, uh, you know, about 90% of our projects are frameless. I basically tell people it's like Lego. All these trim pieces and the panels, it's like Lego and just understanding what is it going to look like when it is finished. And there are certain details that we train on a lot to make sure that any kind of cabinet package just looks stunning and it looks put together and somebody really focused on details there. Um, so yeah, that about the look. I went online and then picked two pictures. The left image is an image that I picked just off of Google and um, it's a typical framed cabinet box used in this kitchen. And right off the bat, I can see a ton of gapping in, my, in between the doors, in between the drawers. To me, this style looks more builder grade. Okay, and I'm not trying to put anybody down. If anybody has frame cabinets, you know, you, hey, you got new cabinets, good for you. Not everybody gets to experience living with new cabinets. That's already really cool. But if I had a choice, I kind of would go towards the right side here. Um, that's actually a picture. That's one of my personal projects I did a while ago. And as you can see, it's also a, the same door style, okay? I was trying to compare the two, but you can see how the drawers and the doors sit much tighter. And in my personal opinion, it is a tighter, cleaner look. So you can see right off the bat if something is framed or if something uses frameless box construction. And then there is a whole nother name in the cabinet world and it's inset. So what is inset? Well, inset box construction or inset cabinetry is actually a subcategory of framed cabinets. So going back to framed cabinets, uh, you have your face frame. Okay. Actually, I have a sample. Hold on. I'm back. Okay, I actually ordered these samples for this video and then forgot about pulling them out. Okay, guys, so in the framed world, as I was just describing, we this is our face frame. This just sits in front of the entire box and then my door gets attached to the face frame. In frameless, my door is attached on the sides of the inside of the box, okay? Very big difference. Now. In this case, this is a standard framed door and my door again sits on the face frame. 
Inset cabinetry uses the same principle of having a face frame. Again, we say this is our face frame that sits on the front of the box, but then our drawers and our doors, the fronts of them, sit flush within that face frame, okay? Now, inset cabinetry is a very, very unique look in itself. And the next image I have for you guys really showcases how cool inset looks when used on a project. You can see all of the doors sitting flush within that face frame. Now that's a complete different look than framed. Even though it uses the same kind of construction box, it's a different way of sitting the drawer fronts and the doors in the manufacturing process. Okay, let's jump into our next point, which is going to be uh, the pros and cons. Okay, and I divided this into uh, access or like accessibility into the cabinet box itself, uh, durability, cost, and look. So in this next image right here, let's talk about accessibility and durability. And again, you can kind of see on the right side here, two cabinet boxes, the one on the far right, frameless, the one further on the left here is a framed cabinet and you can see the frame going all the way around. If you look at the top right here, I love how this image actually showed a full top on the frameless cabinet box because that's in reality more how it is. That helps keep the box square. Now on the left side, you can already tell that because of the face frame, the drawer is actually a lot less wide than the same drawer on a same sized frameless cabinet box, okay? So think about that. My face frame on a framed cabinet is going to crouch inside of my cabinet box opening, which then means that my drawer has to be smaller again. And the same for doors, even though you can reach behind the frame and you can get that that gap of it, if you're putting something inside of it, there is a difference. And if you go through a kitchen, you can deduct, you know, a little bit here on this cabinet, a little bit here on this cabinet, a little bit here. And after three, four cabinets, especially with drawer bases, you've actually lost quite a bit of your storage, which is why so many people these days, so many more manufacturers are leaning towards frameless. So many end consumers and people are leaning towards frameless because if we're gonna get go and get new cabinetry, we wanna make sure that we get the most access to our cabinet. So in general, I'm just telling you where most people uh, tend to go, but obviously you can make up your own mind. On the left side here, that's also a really good image because it shows you even on the top that there is a lot of gapping even in between the boxes. The face frame extends the box on each side by a quarter of an inch. So that alone, half an inch again, that's like a half inch and a half inch. Um, well, it's a half inch in between those cabinets that is kind of lost, okay? On the left side of this page, you can see another image of framed cabinetry. And I think that was a really, really great image when I saw that because it just shows you how that face frame is already taking away so much room that I could be using for drawers and just shelving space, okay? Um, it's taken away from the top. My drawer heights are becoming, my clearances are becoming shorter because I have to clear the opening of that face frame. And you can even see on that image how in between the cabinets, there are gaps because the face frame overhangs the box on each side by a quarter inch. So when I sit two cabinets next to each other, I have a half inch gap in between. And the more you go along your kitchen, the more spacing you're kind of losing by using framed cabinetry. So when it comes to accessibility um, in general, I would say frameless cabinets are the winner you don't lose a single inch out of your cabinets. And durability, I would say that both cabinet constructions, you know, are strong. It's not really about 
the box construction itself. I mean, obviously we have a, you know, a huge industry for framed and we have a huge industry for frameless, so they must both be good when it comes to just durability in that sense. Just know that the construction is slightly different between the two. One framed again, gets their strength and, their, and keeping it square out of the face frame by having that keep its strength uh, and square. And then frameless on the other hand, gets their strength from the actual box itself, box itself and how that is constructed. Next on our list, we have cost and look between the two or three. Some people like to take inset cabinetry and make that kind of its own category, but again, it's really a subcategory of framed. But let's uh, go back into our overview. So we talked about framed versus frameless, inset cabinetry, pros and cons for each style, and um, really the look. Well, let's start with the look. Uh, here's another page where I kind of found some pictures online that really kind of showcase the different styles here. On the very left, we have a framed cabinet style in the kitchen. And you can instantly see, I mean, obviously, if you were to zoom in, you could see this a little bit better, but this is a framed cabinet box construction. I can see in between the doors again and the drawers, there's a lot more gapping, there's a lot more shadowing. It's not as tight. So this is a framed cabinet package. In the middle, the middle picture, the blue kitchen right here is actually inset. And I do really, really like the inset look. And I'm telling you guys, uh, inset has made a huge comeback. And I'll talk about the cost on inset here in a second too, but you can see inset right here in the middle. Everything is sitting flush within the frame. It looks very clean and a little bit vintage. And then on the right, we have frameless. That's from one of our projects. Uh, you can see those drawers, those doors are sitting extremely tight. There is only about an eighth of an inch in between uh, doors and drawers um, to help, you know, obviously for functionality, but it, it just keeps the look super tight and clean. And I think it's just a very fresh kind of look. I don't want to say modern because you can take frameless cabinetry and you can design any kind of look. You can design a vintage looking kitchen using Euro cabinetry, okay? I don't want to create some kind of misconception that European means modern. It does not. It just means a very clean look, okay? And I think those images that we have right here showcase that really good. Now let's talk about cost between the two, okay? So decades ago, framed cabinetry was all that was being manufactured here in the US. So obviously all the cust or the cabinet shops, it doesn't matter custom or what it was, everybody was set up and was calculating and was running their machinery to create framed cabinetry with a face frame, okay? And then step by step, we were being introduced in the US with these European kind of ways of creating cabinetry. And then slowly but surely more and more manufacturers kind of jumped on that bandwagon of building frameless because it just made a lot more sense. And not just from the user experience, not just from you being able to have more access into your box, into your drawer, you, you basically get more space in your cabinetry, but also from a manufacturing perspective, okay? Instantly, we were introduced to when it was a frameless cabinet box that the manufacturer gave us free modifications, customizations when it came to the width. We were able for no kind of additional charges, take any kind of cabinet and then change the width and reduce it by increments of let's say a quarter of an inch or an inch or an eighth of an inch or something like that, Cre being able in that obviously leading us to being create, uh, to creating really, really custom kind of spaces because the overall goal in good cabinet design is to not have a lot of fillers. I'm telling you, that's the number one goal. Okay. As a cabinet designer, we don't want to use fillers where we don't need them. Okay. Just having cabinets, cabinets and random filler. That's horrible. Okay. We don't want that. Okay. And I don't think a lot of people talk about that. Maybe I should make another video just about that. But the goal is to not have that. So 
instantly, when we were having uh, more and more people manufacture frameless cabinetry, all of a sudden we had these free kind of customization abilities to reduce our cabinet width uh, by let's say an eighth of an inch and not pay any upcharges for that. In the framed world, it took a very long time to get to the point of free size modifications because it did take the shop a lot of extra time then to recalculate the size of that frame, okay? So when it comes to the cost differences of framed and frameless, I'm telling you way back, let's say a decade ago, framed cabinetry was a little bit more affordable than frameless. On average, frameless was maybe like 10, 15% more. These days, it's not the case anymore. I have instances where somebody may come work with us and they might have gotten a quote somewhere else and it was a framed cabinet package. It had nothing to do with us. We only like to work on frameless and inset. I do, do jump into that in a second, but um, on the frameless side, that is old news that frameless cabinetry is considered more expensive because from a manufacturing perspective, if the factory focuses on frameless, I'm telling you, they actually were able to um, be really smart about manufacturing, save costs there, and frameless is not considered more expensive than framed. Now, inset, remember the image in the middle here, the blue kitchen? Inset cabinetry, which is a subcategory of framed cabinetry. Now that is considered more expensive just on average. If I was to take the same kitchen over and over and over, and I, instead of frameless, I would plug in my inset look, that is on average 10 to 15% more than a frameless look or a standard framed overlay look, okay? Inset is more labor intensive in the shop. Doors and drawer guides, you know, obviously need to be customized to fit the frame and then we're customizing a lot of sizes because it's also very, very important when you're designing with inset cabinetry that you don't have any extra fillers. It's already a look that has a lot of face frames and one face frame sitting next to another face frame. If I just introduce a random filler, I mean, that would just look horrible, okay? So um, in general, Framed and frameless basically cost the same. And framed inset cabinetry is about 10 to 15% more expensive on your cabinet package. And guys, really quick before I jump into our second part of this video, which is basically cabinet lines explained, the, you know, just touching base on a couple of different cabinet lines for you guys. Like I said earlier, I took about three hours this morning to put this presentation and this video together for you guys, just to ensure I have enough pictures and images and so you can imagine everything that I'm talking about. So do me a favor and give me a thumbs up on this video. I'd really appreciate that. It's Sunday, it's nice out, I'm still doing this. So I really care about educating you guys. All right, let's jump right in, enough said here. Cabinet lines explained, okay? You might have also heard about words like semi-custom, RTA. What does all that mean? So in the world of cabinetry and cabinet manufacturing, obviously we've talked about the different box constructions, but then there's also different cabinet lines. And you have your stock line, which is also sometimes called RTA, and that stands for ready to assemble. Not all stock cabinet lines are flat pack and come unassembled. You can also work with some lines that are already pre-assembled. But what it basically means is that this cabinet line does not offer you any kind of customizations. Everything comes in increments of threes. Everything is already pre-constructed and ready for you to grab. It can be readily available. For us, one of the cabinet lines that we use for this kind of level of cabinet construction or like, you know, cabinet package, it's a lot more budget friendly, you know, super hon honestly. Okay, wait a minute. I'll take that back. It's like super aggressive, okay? And we use the Belmont 1300 line. So typically a small amount of styles, a small amount of colors, no customizations, 
that's how they keep the cost down and they can be super aggressive on that line. That's your stock line and some of them are also RTAs, ready to assemble lines. Next on the list, we have semi-custom cabinet lines and semi-custom is a huge broad word and a lot, a lot of cabinet manufacturers actually fall into the semi-custom lines of cabinetry. And that basically means that they offer a lot of customizations, but they do not consider themselves a full custom cabinet shop. And a lot of times if you're designing, if we're designing a package with you, you know, we'll come up with unique areas where we're trying to create something unique and then we have to draw it and we have to just double check with the factory if they can make that for us. And typically when you take a semi-custom cabinet line, you have a couple of customizations that are for free. Okay, so typically changing the width of a cabinet is a free customization. Changing the depth could be a free customization, the height, but then there's so many different things. Taking a 24 inch cabinet with two doors and turning it into a single door because I just want my run to have a certain size of doors, that could also be a free customization. But what happens in the semi-custom world versus the custom world is that certain customizations do cost money and they kind of are like these upgrade charges, okay? So semi-custom cabinets, it's basically Belmont's main cabinet lines, the 1600, the 1900 and Vero, that's all considered semi-custom. So they try to streamline the manufacturing process by giving you some variety, some options to customize, but they still want to take away that super customization. And I'm telling you, I mean, that, that super customization, I mean, we're talking about real custom stuff that most people don't even need. And um, in that sense, it, you know, that's why semi-custom cabinet lines are so successful because most people are okay to be working within that product, okay? So Belmont is a cabinet line that we carry. We do um, a lot of projects with that line and it typically hits budget and style and we can use it for everything that we need. When you're starting to get into very unique finishes, okay, or you're working in a semi-custom line and you're just constantly adding up all these custom charges, it might make sense to switch to a full custom line. And for the full custom cabinet lines, we actually have our own cabinet line that we've developed with a local shop. We call it Scotch and Nova. And it, it, so if I was to compare the two, it basically starts maybe a tiny bit higher than your semi cabinet line. But what happens is if you end up charging your semi custom cabinet line, you're adding like all these customization charges or custom, just custom charges for the shop, then you might actually outprice the custom cabinet line. So sometimes depending on your project, we actually think it makes more sense to start with a custom cabinet line and then we don't have all these custom charges. A couple other really cool features in a custom cabinet line is typically that you can have custom stains developed. We use any kind of Sherwin-Williams color. When you use a semi-custom cabinet line for custom paint finishes, if you don't like their paint lineup, especially when it comes to whites and you want a certain white, I highly recommend going more the custom line route because you're actually going to be paying less okay so i said custom like a hundred different times and i hope it wasn't annoying but uh last but not least really quick i want to show you this little triangle and dive into that that i have here on this presentation because it's something that we discuss in the cabinet world but i don't think we tell homeowners a lot or just customers in general so typically when you are shopping for cabinetry keep in mind that there are three aspects when you're shopping or you're working towards your your project, you can consider time, you can consider cost, and you can consider quality, but typically you can never get all three of them, okay? If you're really going for a product that gives you quality and longevity, you're typically not going to see that very fast. And if you're trying to go for, let's say a cabinet that is super crazy affordable, and this is not your forever home, and you, for some reason, just need it in two weeks, then you're typically not going 
for quality. So it's kind of like our little triangle that, that people in the cabinet world kind of fall back on and understand that, you know, it just depends on what you're looking for and what kind of project you're working on. Like I said, this was a very in-depth video and I hope it gave you all the information that you needed when first even thinking about cabinetry for your upcoming remodel. If there are any other questions that I might have missed or didn't talk about, please leave them below in the comments. We always go back. I always answer them all of myself. Um, so I can definitely answer any kind of questions that I might have missed. And then as promised, we actually have a free remodeling guide. It's a PDF you can download. I have the link in the description below and you can download it. It asks you a ton of questions that you might not be thinking about. It is really comprehensive and it should be kind of like your first step when putting together just the ideas of your kitchen remodel, when you're in that planning phase. And it has sections where you can answer and you can fill in what is really going to be important for you on this kitchen remodel? What are some things that were driving you nuts? What are some things that are like some big no-nos for your kitchen remodel? And I really advise you to do that because sometimes you end up working with people that are not going to ask you all those questions and you don't want to have those regrets. So I appreciate you guys watching. And if there was anything at all that I've missed, maybe leave those questions in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.